anyway, in this particular video, we're going to look at completing the square. Um, however, the type of question being given is it says solve giving your answer in third form. Well, it means exactly the same. Okay, so uh, we're going to use completing the square in order to solve this. In other words, find out the two values of x. Well, the way to do that is to write y minus 3 squared. So what we actually do first is we look at the term here, minus 6. We halve it. Half of minus 6 is minus 3. And then we square it. So now let's just have a look at that for a moment. So if I've got y minus 3 times y minus 3, well, what do I get? Well, I'm going to expand this to this. So I've got y squared minus 6y plus 9. So in other words, we're putting this equation into a slightly different form. Well, I'm kind of okay for the first bit of it. It's the last bit of it here that causes me a problem. So what I need to do is minus 9 at the end of this. Now, this means that this form is exactly the same as this first part of the equation. But I've still got this minus 15 to deal with, so I'm going to minus 15 as well, make sure that equals to zero. Okay, and then really it's just a case of tidying this up. So let's just um, add those two or bring those two negatives together. I've got minus nine, minus 15 is going to be minus 24. Okay, and that's equal to zero. Now it's asking us to solve it, in other words, find out the value of y. Well, the way I do that is just really using a little bit of algebra to isolate and find my value. So I've got this minus 24, I'm going to add 24 to both sides. Because if I do that, those two will cancel out. And on the left hand side, I get y minus 3 squared equals 24. Well, that's looking a little bit better. OK, not so happy about this squared term. I'm going to square root it because if I square root a squared term, I get left with y minus 3. On this side, I'm going to square root it because I have to do it to both sides. And that becomes the square root of 24. Now, the thing to be aware of, just to remember, is that the square root of a number is a plus or a minus number. So if you've got, for instance, something like um, 81, the square root of 81 is positive 9 or negative 9 because negative 9 times 9 is also equal to 81. OK, so I've got y minus 3 equals plus or minus the root of 24. I'm going to get this 3 over to the other side by adding 3. So that means now I've got y on its own, which is exactly what I'm being asked to do. And y equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 24. And that actually answers the question. There's no problem at all with that. The only thing that you might be aware of, and particularly if you're going to go for grade 9, or as it might be in the future, grade 10, but if you're going to go for a high-level result, you need to remember that uh, we can simplify tw root 24 a little bit by saying that root 24 is exactly the same as saying root 4 times root 6. So it's just uh, considered to be a little bit neater to put y equals 3 plus or minus. Now the square root of 4 is 2 on its own, so that's 2 and then root 6. OK, so that's the two answers of y. y is equal to 3 plus 2 root 6 or 3 minus 2 root 6, but I'm pretty sure at the moment they would gladly accept 3 plus or minus the root of 24. I just kind of add that on as a little bit extra for uh, those of you who might be uh, looking for the higher grade questions. I hope that's been okay for you. Please do add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.